Dear White Church. 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 We don't understand. We are ignorant. But people of colour are currently hurting and they are upset. It would be easy for us to just do nothing. Because the problem doesn't really affect us. Except that we are called to love thy neighbour. I think it's time that we proved it. Not just with our words, but with our actions. So, are you ready to be teachable? Are you ready to be humble? Are you ready to learn? And are you ready to listen? Because I think that's the best place to start. Let's start with listening. Dear White Church, sometimes I feel different and out of place. Sometimes I feel on edge when I walk into a room and don't see myself anywhere but me. I have to dress a certain way, I have to speak a certain way, otherwise I won't be taken seriously. I use Danielle instead of Ora Olua because when I use Ora Olua, you ask me, what is that? You say, you can't say that. You say, do I have a nickname? When you do that, you make me feel unseen. You make my culture seem like something that is disposable to you. Sometimes I feel scared to even express myself for fear of being pigeonholed and stereotyped. It's probably not even intentional, but people just, just stare. But nobody sits down and asks, you know, who are you, I've not seen you before. Sometimes I feel somewhat betrayed when I'm telling you there's gross things going on in the world and injustices that are happening towards the black community and I tell you black lives matter and you overpower me with the response that all lives matter. That makes me feel like you don't care about what is affecting me in this world. It makes me feel like I'm a representative for all black people everywhere and sometimes I feel like I have to please people and act a certain way, dilute my true self and hide within myself so that I am pleasing to what you expect me to be. I love it when there are people um, who are on the stage um, and who are given a voice who are people of colour. Um, I love it when you just want to get to know someone for them. I love it when you see me, when you truly see me. I love it when I'm not a token in your bubble. I love it when you don't use me to make your church seem more diverse. I don't need special treatment, I just need you to see me as a human being, just like you would any other person coming into the church. I love it when you listen. I love it when you take the time to listen to all the things black people are saying about their experiences. I love it when I'm championed, when I'm encouraged, when I'm helped and supported, when I'm prayed for, when I'm loved and cherished for who I am. I find it uncomfortable when sometimes you don't see our struggles as valid. It makes me feel uncomfortable when you're uncomfortable. And if my presence is the thing making you uncomfortable, that makes me not want to be part of the church. I feel uncomfortable when it is said that there needs to be more diversity or you want more diversity but people of colour are not represented in leadership or on the stage or in teams. I feel uncomfortable when you try to add more diversity but you don't ask people of colour and minorities how it should be done. It makes me feel uncomfortable when you assume that I should be on worship team or you assume that I am gifted and talented in certain areas and you also assume that I'm not gifted and talented in certain areas. I feel uncomfortable when I'm made to feel outspoken because I'm a bit louder or because I'm more expressive in my faith. You pursue a line of questioning so specific to my culture and my skin colour that causes a dead-end conversation and offers no opportunity for relationship building. When you question me about my culture so, so specifically, um, showing an interest without actually showing an interest in my heart and in my life. And when that conversation ends, you move on to the next person, as if I'm some sort of uh, one-use, single-use plastic to be thrown into the ocean. Constant feeling that they want to remind me that I'm not, I don't look like them. With the co constant questions like, oh, where are you really from? We don't do that here. Oh, I didn't realise that he was married to you. What does that mean? I feel uncomfortable when you can't recognise that this doesn't rub off and that it's not a jumper or a bomber jacket you can put on when you want to seem cool 
but you take off when all the issues hit you and you don't want to face the truth of white privilege. It's not just that when someone dies and they're on the news that it becomes something to worry about. I have had to intervene even for a young girl on the street that I saw on the, my way back from university being a, a black young girl and being made fun of by a group of white boys on their bikes. I find it uncomfortable when you use the all lives matter trope and tell me that God cares about us all when I'm telling you that I'm in pain and I'm telling you that the black community needs your help. I feel uncomfortable when you make jokes about race but you're not willing to educate yourself on the real issues about race. I feel uncomfortable when you make it seem like I'm cool because I'm black but you can't accept the fact that there are also struggles that come with this. Yes, it's lovely to to congregate with those that are like you, but I didn't join the church. I haven't visited a church to just be put with the black people. I visited a church because I wanna speak to the pastor, I wanna find out what the pastor's heart is. I feel uncomfortable when you're not willing to educate yourself on the issues that are close to my heart, yet you're willing to go to places in your heart and heal yourself outside of the race issue. It makes me uncomfortable when you're so willing to go to Africa and, miss you, and missions and, and help black people in poor third world countries when you can't help your black person sitting next to you. Christianity has been diluted in the white church to something that makes you feel comfortable and peaceful and in your little protective bubble when actually Jesus asked us and called us to the least of these, to the people who are worse off. We do not expect to be a spectacle. We expect to be participants in the kingdom. God created colour. He created me unique. He created me authentic. And I want to be true to who I am. I find it uncomfortable when you do not admit that you have a level of privilege as a white person in this country. Things that white people can do to help in the church with the issue of race and uh, racial injustice in the world is first of all, educate yourself they would not depend on black people to educate them but actually they would take it upon themselves to educate themselves on the racialized injustice that we're seeing in the world. I think it's really important that they would read books and they would watch movies and documentaries that talk about the black experience and the things that black people are crying out about right now. Recognize and acknowledge and discuss the fact that there are racial issues and prejudices everywhere even in the church and even in the UK. Educate yourself on white privilege, educate yourself on why it even feels so uncomfortable to talk about race. The other thing I think I'd like to see is more diversity within leadership. Start an open dialogue. Giving people of colour a voice in the church so that they can talk about their experiences um, of course, including God and God's heart in this situation. It's support that we need, it's conversations that need to be had. That open dialogue is so important to us because for years we've been silenced. For years we've been silenced and expected to be somebody that we're not. Just chat to your friends and see what their experiences are and try to understand the things that they face on a daily basis. You probably will not understand what it's like for us to go through what we go through, but you can be there to listen, you can be there to understand. And not just talk about it, but listen. Listen to people of colour, listen to, to those of diverse backgrounds, listen. When they tell you that the police system and the law enforcement system does not always have their best interests at heart, listen. When they tell you the school system does not always look out for them, listen. Give them space to share their stories on your platforms. Don't feel like you have to offer advice. I know it's very easy to kind of want to fix everything in the moment, but this isn't something that can be fixed with a couple of words. This is about action. And we love to fight for justice, but we need to fight for racial justice now. It can't be true justice until you recognise the injustices in your own heart. I know it makes people feel uncomfortable, and it should do, because it's wrong. Of course, all lives matter, but all lives cannot matter until black lives matter. All lives cannot matter until black people are seen as your equals, seen as people you should not be frightened of, but seen as people that share the same identity as you, as image bearers, as children of God. Educate the white people around you. So your family, your close friends, if you hear something said um, that you don't feel like you wanna stand for, 
then speak up whether it's your mum or your dad, your brother or your sister, or if it's a stranger, and things will not change unless the people who have privilege and power are willing to relinquish control of that privilege and power in order to bring the, the black people and uh, ethnic minorities and other people up. And so we all have a part to play in making sure that this is something that our children don't have to go through, that generations after us are not having to have these same conversations, but we're able to make things better for them in their future. The church shouldn't be silent on this, it should be at the front. We have tried for so long to be the only voice on this. And we hope you will take our hands and we can walk this journey together because something needs to be done. There's not much more that I can add at this time, I'm still learning, but we'll draw your attention to one story of a man who knew what the greatest commandments were, to love God and to love thy neighbour. So he came up to Jesus and said, but who is my neighbour? Who am I called to really love? And Jesus said, the person lying in the road, beaten, robbed, alone, vulnerable, are you going to choose to walk on by like the priest did? Or are you going to stop like the Samaritan? the person of a different race, a different culture, a total stranger, are you going to stop and use your resource to show mercy? I think it's time we opened our eyes and saw the person in front of us, listened to them, loved them and lifted them up. This is just the beginning.